the misconception that people have is computer science engineers they can only be coders or developers it's not so there are different fields in computer science uh, engineering For the past year at Inside IIM, we have been conducting one-on-one -on -one career coaching sessions as counsel, short domain-specific courses as master classes, and university-affiliated certificate programs. Now we are extremely excited to announce that we have a new home for all these highly rated programs in altuni.in. So if you are looking to earn a high salary, get a promotion, switch jobs, click on the link in the description or just visit altuni.in. Thank you. Enjoy the video and. Don't forget to press the bell icon to never miss an update. Cheers. Welcome to another episode of Engineering Ajkal. It's a fact that not everyone can uh, get into the IITs and the NITs of the world. However, it's also in fact that you don't need to do IIT or NIT to work in a company like Amazon, specifically Amazon Web Services. According to a guest interviewee, you need just confidence, passion and love for what you do. So he is none other than Nikhil Anand. He started his journey as Christ University and he is now working in Amazon. What made him embark in this journey? Let's find out. So Nikhil, tell us about yourself. Okay, so you have already mentioned that I'm a daytime uh, cloud support engineer at Amazon Web Services. I'm based out of Hyderabad. So working at Amazon makes up half of my day. And apart from that, uh, my interests sort of flicker a lot. So I'm into a lot of things. So when someone asks me to describe about myself, I just say that, okay, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none, and proudly so. So apart from that, I have a YouTube channel that I run, and I have a website where I write a lot of articles and blogs. Not, I do not get a lot of time to write a lot of articles these days, but yes, I occasionally contribute to my own website. So which college did you do your engineering and which stream? Basically, it's quite an interesting story. So I, I, I studied up until my 12th boards in Maharashtra and then uh, I, I gave my 12th boards in 2013 and I messed up big time. I was a great scholar at school till 10th grade, 11, 12th, not so. So I messed up all my entrance exams and just a fun fact, uh, I remember uh, screwing up my uh, JE mains big time and also the Maharashtra CET. I scored 8 out of 100 in mathematics. So I did not really get any so-called good or reputed college in Maharashtra, which was uh, like totally heartbreaking at that point of time. Now it's fun when I recall that. So uh, and one of my friends suggested, why don't you give it? Uh, why don't you give a try in the Karnataka state exams? I did that. I managed to get a decent score, and I got into Christ University. Now Christ is a big name in the southern part of the country, but the point to note here is Christ was just picking up in the engineering stream back then when I had joined. So placement scene, not so cool back then. But I had to give it a try and I needed some college really desperately and Christ was ready to take me in. I was like, why not take it? At least I will have the brand name with me, some sort of a brand name even though Christ was not into engineering too much back then. I just gave it a shot and it worked, for, it worked decently well for me. I picked up computer science, uh, not out of interest out of the herd mentality rather because my sister, my family, some of my cousins, they've all been computer science engineers. So I was like, okay, I'll go with computer science because that's what the scope uh, thing comes into picture. I was like, okay, I'll take that. Since you said that, you know, uh, in the Christ University, engineering st was still a growing thing. So were there any unique courses or new courses that you did at that point of time, which is even relevant in the work that you're doing today? Yes, um, so if I recall it correctly, uh, it was in the second year of uh, my graduation when we had a subject uh, named operating systems, a lot of engineering students could relate. So operating systems is a very dry subject. When you study in college, you just feel, okay, why are we even studying this? It makes no sense because it's really dry, very theoretical and you think, okay, what will we do with those Linux commands? Will they ever even come into picture when we actually start working? So that is something that, that's a misconception I feel and that is what even I had. Now when I have started working, I see those operating system concepts coming back into the frame and I realize, okay, maybe had I been a little more uh, vigilant in those classes, I would have easily picked those things up now. And similarly, there was another subject, computer networks in the third year of my graduation. 
And again, I was thinking, what are those network capture packets? What is TCP UDP? How will that ever benefit me? All I need to do is code. That's what my uh, brain was aligned at. And now I realize, okay, development or the coding is not the only thing that computer science engineers can do. There's a lot more to it when it comes to computer science engineering. How can people go into Amazon and companies like Google without the tag of IIT or NIT? It all comes down to the fact how you market yourself and how you market your skills. Back in college, one thing that I learned was you need to have a very solid LinkedIn profile because that really helps. Even if you're not doing a lot of things professionally, as a student, there are certain things that you're doing. Make sure you put it across that you'll have it in writing when it comes to writing your resume. And then keep on looking for jobs from these big companies. They often post their jobs, like for Amazon. I can speak on behalf of Amazon. So basically, Amazon posts all the job requirements on Amazon.com. So I kept looking that again and again. I saw, okay, there's an opportunity there. And I just uh, applied for it the moment I felt, okay, this was the right time. I'm ready for it. Because on the job description page, I read through the job description. What was the requirement? I was like, okay, fine. I meet this requirement. I'm sure I can do this. I guess I'm well versed with the concept. Why not? Give it a try. So uh, coming back to your journey in Epsilon, which was the first place that you uh, were hired, just tell us about the experience that you gathered there and what 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 experience that you had there helped you in the job that you have now in Amazon. Uh, to be honest, not not, not a great uh, deal of help that I got from Epsilon to transition into an engineer at Amazon, because mm -hmm. the computer, uh, like. The misconception that people have is computer science engineers, they can only be coders or developers. It's not so. There are different fields in computer science uh, engineering. Someone can totally jump into analytics. They can be good at some services like SAP or any any of the analytics services. So they can totally di uh, like divert into that direction. They can go into the cloud as I said or they can take up coding. The thing is people just follow a lot of trends. So say five years, uh, ago, like about in 2015, five years ago, so people have this misconception that, okay, software engineer means, okay, they need to be coders. That's not true. And that is where I feel I missed out a year in my life because I took up a job in Epsilon because everyone told me, okay, computer science is all about development and coding. You're getting a developer role. Why not take it? So I took it. And once I went there, first six months, it was really great. I even moved from a developer role to a full stack developer role because I, I, I obviously, if I'm doing something, I put my heart and soul into it. So I did that. But somewhere down the line, I realized, okay, there was no work-life balance there because there was no interest in development uh, in developing code. I used to work nine to five. And even after that, I used to take a break. And even after my shift hours, I used to come back home, still write code because I was not good at it. I was not having fun doing it. That is when I realized, okay, this is not my cup of tea. And I decided I needed to switch. So last month or two at Epsilon, when I was serving my notice period there, I started studying uh, in the field of interest, in, in my field of interest, which was networking and operating systems. And at the same time, I was fortunate enough to see a job opening, a job listing for Amazon. I applied, they called me for an interview and I cleared that. So you have moved into Amazon's web services and it's an aspirational company for like many engineers. So how did you get this opportunity? As I said, okay, I messed up my entrance exams. That does not mean other friends of mine messed it up too. So some of my friends, they were fortunate enough to get into the IITs and the NITs. And when we used to like get together, they used to talk about the companies, the big companies. And one of my friends, uh, she used to say about Amazon, okay, she works at Amazon and this is how it is. The work-life balance is amazing. It's great. You just work during your shift hours, no need to extend beyond shift hours. And plus the work that she, the work that she actually did, I really, I found it very fascinating. And so I, I was very intrigued by it and that is when I started exploring the opportunity. So I approached my friend again, as I said, contacts are very important. I approached my friend, I asked her if she could refer me at Amazon. She was like, sure, why not? If you get through, she gets the referral bonus, obviously. So, so it's a win-win for both of us. And so she referred me and I started preparing for it. I started studying everything that I could uh, in that field, depending on uh, the descriptions that I read across the internet. I read a lot of, about Amazon interview process on Quora. I checked Glassdoor reviews, I read a lot of things, gathered all my intel and then that is how I started preparing for it and I appeared for the interviews of like about some five or six rounds of it. What happens is you write, uh, you basically attend the uh, aptitude test. If you clear the cutoff marks, you move to the next round and next rounds are like the face-to-face -face interviews and these days virtual interviews. So 
those are different like some of them would be technical rounds and depending on the job profile like say suppose you are appearing for an entry level role say a cloud support associate so in that case you will have like a basic networking round technical round which would be like some which would go on for an hour or something like that if you do well you move on to the next tech round so there are like two or three tech rounds depending on the job that you are applying for and then you will have managerial and hr rounds so that is what it is and so what exactly do you need to study for it obviously the field of interest matters say if you are getting into cloud engineering if you have some certifications in hand beforehand so that really helps now what sort of certifications do you need the certifications that you would need is basically the cloud engineering is all about networking and knowing things about operating systems so it's always good to have a certification like a ccna or if you're applying for aws you it's always good to have aws cloud practitioner certification done or say aws solutions architect associate certification you are working as a cloud engineer at aws what does exactly a cloud engineer do as a cloud engineer what you're supposed to do is basically help the customers of your company say amazon in this case so you need to ensure that you help your customers run their workloads effectively and smoothly on the cloud platforms now what is cloud cloud is nothing but virtual servers virtual storage like back in the day if you roll back the years there were hardware that will that that were needed to maintain the servers and the storage which took a lot of efforts to maintain and obviously scale up in those terms now cloud came into the picture the big companies the big players of cloud including aws in fact uh yeah so these companies they're helping com- uh, the other companies migrate from the normal traditional hardware to the virtual cloud and that is where the role of cloud engineers or cloud support engineers come into the picture if the customers face any issues during their migration or during their deployments to the cloud the cloud support engineers or the cloud associates they help them so uh, you know as a cloud engineer what are the basic and common challenges that you face and how do you solve these kind of challenges basic challenges uh, to be honest the biggest challenge is uh, the fact that you need to work uh, real time like uh, in case of a development role you all obviously have some sprints uh, in uh, the cs jo- uh, cs lingo if i say so there's some sprints like okay you get a project and you get a deadline like you have 3 months you need to finish this project but here uh, what happens is like real time applications are at stake if a customer complains my application is down you need to make sure you bring it up back again as soon as possible so the biggest challenge is, is doing it in the right amount of time like sometimes it could be as less as 15 or 20 minutes if, if it is that critical like imagine a big company or a big website facing downtime when customers are trying to access their application obviously it means like millions and billions of losses so the real time factor that is something that's the biggest challenge and how do i overcome it or how do how does any other engineer working overcome it it's basically you need to be very fast in your thought process you need to have a lot of options in your mind you need to read thoroughly every day so that you know what to do when uh, what to do and when to do and how to do so the what's when's and how's is something that you need to keep ready with you in hand uh, all the time and obviously you need to have good connection within your uh, within your team and within your office basically so that if someone is facing some issue and if you are not able to troubleshoot it in real time you quickly reach out to someone who can possibly help you there if you had the ability to go back in time what was that one thing or one or two thing that you will like to change or not change if i have the ability to go back in time uh, i would definitely not do a lot of things that i have done and that is basically on the lines of getting influenced by random people because when you are in college all you think about is getting a good placement and so whoever comes whoever who will you see any senior that you see or any say in any family gathering if you meet any guy and you are like okay this guy is a developer and he's earning like a lot maybe even i should be doing this so that is the kind of mindset that you have then you meet someone else you see okay this guy knows python okay maybe i should start doing I'll start learning python and okay that will help me and you start doing that so what i did in in my college days was okay i completed literally i tell you i completed around 20 25 certifications and i and i do not remember anything about those certifications now because i never used them so spending a lot of time i won't say wasting but yeah spending a lot of time on those certifications or courses which were of no use and i did not even have any interest in them but just because someone else was interested in it 
and just the thought that okay if i do this i might get that not having that far sightedness so that is something that i would like to change i will not spend like hours doing courses that will not benefit me so thank you so much it was very grateful to talk to you and i'm sure a lot of people will learn from this and especially all the students who are listening to you will know a little more about cloud computing and stuff like that so thank you so much thank you thank you thank you for your time